Hello, our coverage of the Wills World Cup of Cricket continues here on Star Sports with the highlights of the third game from Group B, played in uh, Baroda in the western part of India. And this brought together New Zealand. Of course, have already played one match. They opened the tournament uh, with a win over England. And they were up against the ICC qualifiers, the Netherlands. Well, the New Zealanders, uh, they may have been forgiven for fielding the same side that uh, beat England by 11 runs on that opening day, but they made two changes, both bowlers, uh, Larson and Dion Nash, who played uh, excellently in that first game, were rested. In came the off-spinner Patel and uh, Kennedy for a tryout. The Netherlands didn't have the best preparation for this tournament. They were hit by the Delhi Belly. A stomach virus affected uh, seven of their players but uh, they managed to show up and acquit themselves very well. In fact, it wasn't uh, so much the David and Goliath encounter that uh, many were fearing. It was quite a bright cricket uh, match and uh, full credit to the Dutch side. Well, the New Zealand captain, Lee Jermon, won the toss and uh, elected to bat. Craig Spearman, who missed out in the first match against England, had one let off. That is his record in the one-day international arena. And he'll be opening with the very much in form Nathan Astor. And it's going to be Roland the Fervor to open. He'll be bowling at the media tower end. Interesting field placing that uh, Stephen Lovers has come up with. No slips. His two catching men, one at short cover and the other one at short mid-wicket. So it's a fairly defensive field to start with. Spearman immediately off the mark. This man, Nathan Astle, was very impressive in his match against England. He's been in terrific form, three centuries already this season at this level. And he's a very impressive player, Richard. Very much so, and I'm sure the Dutch uh, players out there will know a lot about Nathan Astor because he spent quite a bit of time out there playing uh, cricket as well, along with Lee Jamon, the New Zealand captain, of course. And uh, Darren Murray, a former New Zealand player, has also spent uh, time out there playing in Holland. So I guess they'll know something uh, about each other. Hesitation and a direct hit. Umpire Kaiser Hyatt is at square leg. He's called for the replay. And the boys from the Netherlands reckon they've got their first wicket. And Nathan Astor, I think, is going to be walking off. I think he knows that he's well short of his ground. And what an unbelievable start here for the Netherlands. So Craig Spearman just pushing out through into the offside there. And the man there at short cover, Delader, coming in there. And it's a direct hit. And we will find that Astor is well short of his ground. And so that's a wonderful breakthrough. Great start there for the Netherlands. Nathan Astor has run out for no score. And New Zealand have lost their first wicket without a run on the board. Stephen right Fleming, on the left-hander, batting at number three. He looked in good form against England. Played a bit of a secondary role to Nathan Astle, but he won't be doing that here today. One of the great things about this game of cricket, it is a tremendous leveller, as Nathan Astle has just found out. It's worth a shout. Probably going to be a few LBW opportunities here because of this low bounce. Well, unless he got a nick on that, that looked to be pretty close indeed. Goodness gracious. So if he got a little nick on that, then he might have been OK. If he didn't, he might be very fortunate indeed. Fortunately, they're all fit for this game. Paul Young Bucker pitching too short once again. And that's the first four of the day, and Craig Spearman really did get onto that one. And with Nathan Astle going very early, it's now up to Craig Spearman to take advantage of that situation and get a beginnings himself. And we are now starting to see uh, some aggression there from him, so perhaps he's just started to adapt the conditions. Got into position well, a little bit aerially for a start. Over the top goes Spearman, that's a lovely shot. Dead straight, and four runs. Well, he's been looking to go over the top, Craig Spearman. The ball really hasn't been there. The length has been good from the Holland attack. But this one in the slot. And the keeper standing up. He has the confidence to hit through the line of the ball. Playing from the crease, on the up, and dead straight. And he can stand and admire it because it was a very good shot. Roland Lefebvre. Away he goes again. And just wide of the fieldsman. And into the fence for four more. 
Took on the fieldsman that time, Craig Spearman. And in more ways than one, Grant, because he's backed himself to go down the track. The keeper's standing up. If ever does quite well, trying to drift it down leg side, he may have seen him coming. Then, of course, he had to worry about where he was going to place the shot once he hit it in the air. The man is quite square. Here at backward square leg. But he was able to hit it just square enough to avoid him. Hammers this off the back foot. That's a good shot. We're running away from the fieldsman. That was all timing from Craig Spearman. And the New Zealand 50 is up. Second shot of real authority in the over for Spearman. And also a hint that the outfield is starting to get just a little bit quicker as well. The moisture's gone off the surface. And that's a fine shot from Spearman. Past the man at mid-off who was back on the circle. And the timing superb. A lovely off drive for four. Well, Nolan Clark's in there at short cover for Holland. And just for a second, I thought he, was, he probably thought he was in business here because he did play it in the air, Fleming. Wasn't quite to it and did lift it sh slightly. A hand went out from Clark just briefly. And then I think he thought better of it. It was past him and to the fence. And Spearman goes over the top again. Fieldsman closing and not this time. Well, they really have shown wonderful commitment, the Dutch players in the field, but that time, the ball just winning the race. Well, Roland Lefebvre is the man out there at deep back with square leg. He's got the chase. I think evidence again that the outfield's just getting just a little bit quicker. This wouldn't have made it in the first two or three overs. Just creeping over there. The commitment's there, but the ball wins the race. right in the slot again and Spearman knows what to do with that four more to Craig Spearman Steve Lovers is the Dutch captain he's the one chasing this and I think now he realizes he's got a few problems on his hand and New Zealand momentum is starting to increase right in the slot there and Spearman of course the men out are not down in the deep at mid-off so the confidence is there you can see it in the eyes he's on 49 And there it is, half century for Stephen, uh, for Craig Spearman. And that's well batted. He goes over the top. That's a big hit. One bounce, four more. Really are on the attack now, the New Zealand batsman. I think the problem for the Dutch side here is the sameness about the bowling attack. I think once you get in and you're confident about the pace of the pitch, you can start to use your feet with confidence. And Fleming, well, he's pulled that from outside the off stump. And one bounce four. Slow delivery. He's got it away again, back with a point. This should go to the fence as well. Well, that's a terrific over for New Zealand. 83 for one. Beautiful pull shot, too short. Four runs. Very good shot off the back foot. Conte trying to do a good job for his team out there with his off spin. Not a lot of turnout for him though. Reverse sweep again. This time more productive. Good shot. Four runs. Gee, he sees it early, doesn't he? Gets into a position very nicely. Certainly executed that shot far better than the one uh, in the previous yeah. over. And uh, just really can cha really changing the footwork there is uh, quite unbelievable. He's got a ton of time. Catch it! Goes for the big hit, it's in the air. Down to deep mid-off, should catch it, and he has, he holds onto it. Very good catch down there. Craig Spearman taking on the outfield. Didn't quite get onto it, hit underneath it, and immediate success to the captain as he comes on and bowls his first over. Well, a bit of a waste for New Zealand, and Craig Spearman will be disappointed with that because he is well set and was probably unnecessary because it is a long boundary out there. Got under it, and the young 18 year old Bass Zalderant gets under it and takes a very good catch for his captain and for his team. And so that's the breakthrough they've needed. They've waited a long time for it. They have taken a bit of a pasting in the field just recently. But Craig Spearman's gone for 68. New Zealand 119 for two.
Roger Tews, the new batsman for the New Zealand. He's, of course, down at the non-striker's end. The batsman crossed as that ball was in the air. Long on, Baz Zyderant again, and that's two catches for the young man. What a terrific uh, debut this has been for young Baz Zyderant. Yeah. He's really doing well at the moment. He needs this uh, little uh, confidence for him. Now that's the second wicket for Stephen Lubbers and uh, very good for him. He, he bowls very well. New Zealand 155 for three. Cairns at the non-striker's end. Batsman having crossed as uh, Baz Sidorant took that uh, catch it long on. Oh, and unfortunately a miss stumping it well. Now, he's a hired who's called for the replay. Maybe he got there in time. Well, there was a fumble first up, but a quick recovery there by the young wicketkeeper. And he's got him off in time, so that's very good work. So Stephen Lubbers doing a great job for... Uh, for Holland and Roger Tews is gone. New Zealand 165 for four after 30 overs. Adam Perore coming in at number six. That's a bit rough. That's gone down leg side and Cairns has helped it on its way down to the fence. Well, it was a quicker ball from Stephen Lubbers. Probably the arm ball and he didn't quite get it right and he drifted at leg side and Chris Cairns really was allowed to paddle it round. It uh, would have been signalled a wide had he not uh, connected it, but I'm sure he'd rather take advantage of uh, getting four runs for it. So that's well played and beat the man who's up in the circle there at uh, just backward at square on the leg side. New Zealand have 200 on the board. Here goes Cairns, he's hammered this. One bounce, four more. Big shot from Chris Cairns to end the over at 204 for four. Oh, that's a big hit. That is a massive hit. That is six runs. Beautifully struck there by Chris Cairns. Well, I've been crying six or six of the crowd. They haven't seen too many of them today. It's a man back at long on, and he was going back and back and back and back. Couldn't go back far enough. 2.40 for four. Run rate just under six runs per over. At the moment, one would expect that to go over six. Swings across at another big one. Is it going to make it? It is six runs. Two in two overs. Well, the foot's gone down on the accelerator now. Cantrell, the bowler. Nice little gentle off spinner. And this has cleared the fence again. Both fences and into the crowd. Cairns goes straight again. This one, yes, it's over again, I think. Magnificent shot straight down the ground. Fieldsman had, a, just for a fleeting second, a chance of picking it up. Just a little slow in getting around there. Well struck again by Cairns. Well, the crowd in Baroda now uh, getting what they came to see. Chris Cairns in full flight, and they don't come much straighter than that. Gives himself for a man bold. Cantrell saw the move early, giving himself just a little bit of room, Chris Cairns. Once again going after Cantrell, exposing the stumps, a quicker delivery from Peter Cantrell. And the fifth wicket is down for New Zealand. Full marks to the bowler here, Cantrell, take the hat off to him. He saw Cairns give himself room, a little bit quicker through the air, dead on target, and Cairns is gone. Punishing blows in that 52, 253 for five. Seven overs remaining for New Zealand. Great opportunity here to get over the 300 mark. Chris Harris, the new batsman. Full toss. Six runs. Flat, hard, and clear of the boundary. 
Well, sometimes the old waist high full toss, they can uh, be a bit difficult get it, to get away, but he's hit this so well. Is it a no ball, Smithy? He's only travelled, he's not life threatening, is it? It's only travelled about 30 feet off the air, flat, as you say, Keith, and the timing was superb. There's a man out there, he had no chance. Oh, that's another big six. That's Perori's 50. Three sixes in the last few overs. A little forward, batting extremely well. Well played. Well, this is a bonus for Adam Perori. He was left out against England. He must have wondered with New Zealand winning whether he was going to get a go today. And he has got the chance, and he seized it. Gotcha. Out. Should be out. Puts it away to mid-wicket. Nolan Clark, the fieldsman there, straight to him. In fact, not a, the best delivery he's received today. And another big innings just escapes the New Zealand batsman. Perori's on his way. A useful 55, New Zealand 279 for six. Jamon looks to be in some uh, difficulty out there, maybe... Bit of a back problem that could affect his wicket keeping later in the game. Oh. Big shout, and uh, Chris Harris is gone. So, once again, Marcel Schaber, wicket keeper who's been very impressive here, involved in the action. Once again, Chris Harris, he'll be disappointed with that because really it was a wide ball and it was a free hit. And the keeper standing up did well to take that catch, got himself in a very good position. He's happy. the end of the gap and that one's got past the uh, diving outfielders well, there appeared to be a bit of a mix up out there with two of the Dutchmen it's not deciding who was actually going to stop the ball and really they almost collided with each other and a chance here and once again, it's the keeper who's in the thick of things. So he completes uh, a very good 50 overs work with the gloves. Marcel Shaver catching Deepak Patel. And so Danny Morrison, right-handed batsman, almost holds a world record for most test ducks. Well, the thing is, I don't think he's going to have a strike today because there's only one ball left and the captain, Lee Jamon, will have that privilege. And it's a question of where it's going to go. The last ball of the innings. Ball just short of the uh, outfield. And just a single to lead him on. So New Zealand finished with 307 for the loss of eight wickets in their 50 overs, and they can be uh, well pleased with that score. So once again in this tournament, we have a side uh, amassing more than 300 runs, and this was a ground record at Baroda, 307 for eight the total. Four players got half centuries or more. Nathan Astle didn't. He was run out for a duck. What a contrast to his uh, fine performance on the opening match against England. Craig Spearman was the culprit there. He went on to make amends partly, scoring 68. He was the top scorer in the end. Fleming, 66. A great knock by Cairns, 52 off 37 deliveries. Perori also hitting the ball very cleanly, 55 off 54 deliveries. Some good work by Lubbers, uh, getting three wickets for 48 and Backer two for 51. Well, we shall see how the Netherlands went about their reply after this break. Peter Cantrell out in the middle. There was some doubt as to whether he may have been able to get out there. Had to go off the field, taking a tough court and bold. It's just got away from him. So Danny Morrison to open up for New Zealand against Nolan Clark. Oh, an edge, just short. Not a great deal of life in this pitch now, Ian. No, I don't think that'll get Danny Morrison too excited. Interesting to see just a little bit of out away swing with the new ball, Danny Morrison, to the right-handers. And two slips in place. Lee Jamon's giving him a fairly attacking field by one day standards. Two slips in a gully. In the air, but safe. Went after it. That's put the pressure on the young fellows. Young fellow, a couple of wides, and then punished through the covers for four runs. 
Well, you'd never guess he's from Barbados, would you, Nolan Clark? Look at this, stand and deliver stuff. That's the full flourish, the West Indian flourish through the covers and to the fence for four. Great stuff. Clark punishing that one off the back foot. Just a little bit short to him. And throwing it to the bowlers and a good move. Going to where the 47-year-old is running and there could be overthrows here. Bit of sloppy cricket there for New, from New Zealanders. When you're 47, you hit four, you like to see it go over the rope. You don't want to run them all, I guess, too often, Keith, but he'll take him. 19 boundaries and five sixes in that total of 307 off the 50 overs for New Zealand. Bowled him, threw him just a little bit late coming down on it. And that's a very good breakthrough for young Robert Kennedy. There's been enormous pressure on him. The New Zealanders quite rightfully come in and congratulate him. Well, yes, they do. A sad blow for Holland this. Nolan Clark looked to be just getting going. And he's been cut off at the pass, really. This is a good delivery from Kennedy, which is just outside off stump. Angles back in with the arm and looking to hit round it somewhat, Nolan Clark. He misses out. Kennedy hits. And Holland 18 for one. Flavian Aponso coming in at the fall of the first wicket. Good wicket there for young Robert Kennedy. First couple of overs a little wayward. But picking up something which will ease the tension for him. He's just looking to hit round this somewhat, wasn't he? He's trying to hit it through the onside. The line of the delivery didn't dictate that. Nice drive. Morrison just looking for the Yorker there and Cantrell making good contact. Just had enough... Oh, good save. Down goes the hoarding, but good save, and I think that was a legitimate one. There was no chance there, I don't think, of the feet being over when he dragged it back. He was certainly in the, in the field of play. Well, that's a very good shot from Peter Cantrell because it's a slower ball. Look, he hardly even lets it go, Danny Morrison. Really struggles to get to the other end. Sticks out the foot, gets past him. And look at the good work from Roger Toos, Keith, as you say. Commitment down there. Looks as if it's going for four. Bang, he gets it back just in time. Down go the hoardings, back comes the ball. Coming up now for the 10th over of Holland's innings, Robert Kennedy, the bowler. That's a very pleasant shot, beautifully played. And the fieldsman gives it away, that's a lovely boundary. Well, certainly the best shot that Cantrell has played in his innings. And Robert Kennedy just over pitching a little bit there. Almost a half volley. Hit on the up, actually, and it was nice to see Cantrell looking to get well forward. And this is something the other batsmen haven't really done. So really, that's a classical cover drive. And it really did pierce the mid off and the cover. And this is where the, uh, the Netherlands batsmen are having some difficulty, just adjusting to the extra pace from the New Zealand bowlers on really slowish pitch conditions. He's got that very fine. This will put uh, a bit on Craig Spearman. He can't get to it. And that's four runs for Cantrell. Long way to go for Holland. They've lost the wicket of Nolan Clark. And Robert Kennedy has bowled five over so far. So he's certainly being given a good workout here by Lee Jumont. He's hit that well. Very good shot. Alponso, four runs. Straight drive right back past the bowler was well played and went very quickly again to the boundary and this is something that the uh, Netherlands batsmen need to do obviously they're going to challenge the score and I'd say it's a near hopeless task really you might have to eat the words later but they're going to have to get some boundaries bowl him so no ball so he can stay there the batsman's not aware of it they could run him out here now he can't do that either because the bales are already off, so it's a no ball, and he's still in. Well, Robert Kennedy, I guess that's the inexperience of the man there, because if he'd actually held the ball in hand and run up to the wickets with the bales off and taken a stump out of the ground with ball in hand, and Aponso was out of his crease, he would have been given out, run out, but I think had that happened, that would not have been good in the spirit of the game. As we see Kennedy bowling, a no ball has been called. He's got through the defences there of Aponso. He felt he was genuinely dismissed and started to leave the ground. 
As we see, getting through bat pad, direct hit, middle stump. And as he started to leave the ground, heard the call, tried to get back to his crease. And unfortunately for him, he's able to do that. It's all happening in this over. Shy at the stumps, and that's going to be possibly four overthrows. So New Zealand have given away four runs. For the sake of hitting the stumps at the bowler's end, Kennedy suffers. Has a quick look across to the fieldsman and can't believe it. Well, it's all happening here, isn't it? That ball just pushed out into the mid-wicket position. The looks of it might be what Harris is it. Direct hit, the batsman's OK. He's made his ground, Cantrell. But the deflection and Patel trying to back up there, he's been beaten. And so the bowler, unfortunately for Kennedy, is going to suffer those extra runs. Got onto that one quite quickly. That's a good shot, well timed. It's been pretty watchful, Peter Cantrell. Every now and then we've seen flashes of uh, very good stroke play, and this is a good example of it. It's short of a length from Cairns. It sits up, but it still has to be put away. Onto the back foot, and the placement and timing very good. And that is the 50 for Holland. And the 15th over, so not a rapid start, but solid. And well caught. And what's more, he's had another let off. This is amazing. Umpire Robinson, now I think he's suggesting that the, uh, the fieldsman was too deep. And they're pointing, the New Zealanders are pointing out to umpire Robinson that this is the 16th over. We've gone past 15. So I'm sure that's what the uh, the disagreement is about. Umpire Robinson checking with Kiza Hyatt. And uh, he nods in agreement and says, I'm sorry, Arponzo, I can't save you any longer. You're on your bike. So uh, Holland have lost their second wicket. Chris Harris bowling his little leg cutters. Got that one to uh, hold up. Uh, Ponzo playing just a little too uh, early and spooned it to uh, a short mid-wicket. That's a pretty good catch. Holland, 52 for two. With Stephen Lubbers uh, at the crease now. Performed extremely well with the ball. Flighted the ball nicely, picked up three wickets. And this is the downfall of uh, Flavian Aponzo. Well caught by Nathan Astell. given out. Stephen Lubbers there, a good piece of work by uh, Chris Harris. The throw was high, throw from Kennedy originally. Harris had to go high and he dragged it down onto the stumps. Well, he called the run, a second run, Steve Lubbers, so he's only really got himself to blame. He did look to be labouring somewhat out. The throw from Kennedy was quite accurate, but it was too high. And then look at the good work here from Harris, the good presence of mind to drag it down onto the stumps. And he's well short, about a metre and a half. Umpire Ian Robinson from Zimbabwe gets it exactly right. And Steve Lovers is on his way, the Holland captain. And now Holland, 85 for three. Holland, 67 for three. And uh, they've changed the batting order a little. Roland Lefebvre has come out to face uh, the bowling of Chris Harris, he's in with uh, Peter Cantrell. And uh, that is the, the run out of Stephen Lubbers. He was always struggling, but very good work there from Chris Harris dragging the ball down onto the stumps. It's strange for some of the Dutch players uh, to play against uh, Nathan Essel and uh, Lee Germain. Lee Jermon was the Lee Jermon was the coach for uh, Red and White this year, and Nathan Essel was the player for VOC in Rotterdam, and Bas Suiderland and uh, Klaas Jan van Noordwijk uh, played for the same club. There's four runs off the bat there. The attempt to sweep shot just got a little bottom edge on that one because this outfield's quicken up quite considerably. Yeah. 
went for it, it's wide of mid-off and four runs. That's the one that they've been searching for, just to try and break things up a little bit. Took the risk and got away with it. That's Lefebvre, yes, that's Lefebvre. We have still a few more attacking players to come. Just went through nicely with it, didn't he? Wasn't quite to the pitch of the ball. A good shot. Nice sweep shot. Four runs. Timed it nicely. Not easily play, to play that shot against um, Harris. Morrison just not able to get around. Well struck. Got it on the bounce. And kept running away from the fieldsman. The thing is that you're chasing 308 for victory. Yeah. Yes. Well, we accept a defeat, but uh, we try to... Well, to make a good impression. To Take make out. a good impression. There's Harris just holding one back there. And Peter Cantrell looking for the drive. Just holding out to the fieldsman at short cover there. Very good field placings by Jamon there. Astle, the fieldsman there. He's already taken one catch right off the meat of the bat, but just not quite to the pitch of the ball. And a very good field placing there. So Holland struggling now, losing the fourth wicket. Cantrell out for 45 off 86 deliveries. Tim Delater, the new batsman, all-rounder in the side. So nice shot. Good dive. Having a good time in the field, Nathan Astle. Unfortunately, didn't have such a good time running between the wickets today. But taken a couple of catches, and that was a very good save. And very miserly. Oh, it's out, LBW. Umpire Robinson there judging the batsman to be out, LBW. I thought it might have been doing just a little bit too much in the air. But he's in a lot better position than us. So, unfortunately, Rudy, the loss of another wicket, Tim Delater. For Holland. Yeah, it's a pity that Tim Delader has gone. He, um, well, he can, he can, he can score a quick 50, but yeah, not today. And it's Holland five for 102, and this is the 32nd over. Whipped away nicely through mid wicket. This will be a good contest. The outfield has certainly quickened up and, well, he's moved the rope a bit, perhaps, but never mind. And the batsmen have completed a couple. Yes, we may have to have a wee audit on this one. First of all, it's a good shot. It's just drifting down the onside and put away well by Lefebvre. Perori is the chaser. The contact here, well, I think it's fair enough to say that he didn't have the ball on his hand when he touched the rope. He did move the rope, so I think that's fair enough. Well, that's a lovely shot. Right off the middle of the bat. Use a few more of those. Well, exactly. You can see and we've put Roland up a little in the batting order and we just wanted his experience to, uh, at that stage, in the batting. And he's showing that he's uh, very much up to it. That's well hit, so good over there for Holland. Two boundaries and two very well struck shots. That's well struck. Right off the middle of the bat. So the, uh, the run rate just picking up nicely here for Holland. I was Fielding, just, sorry. Sorry, I was just going to say, uh, maybe they'll they'll have a, a bit of a look on his last offer, but it's going to be interesting to see when the uh, the quicker stuff is coming back, because it might produce a few more runs as well, yeah. And the stump is smashed. And it's probably stump vision uh, gone for Burton there, I would say. Robert Kennedy, spot on with his accuracy. The end of... Class Jan van Norveg. As well bowled too by Kennedy. He's come back well to pick up his second wicket now and had a different start. And could easily have had a third wicket as well because he actually bowled a Ponso on a no ball. And 
and uh, Glenn Turner has always felt that Robert Kennedy, if he gets it right, is one of the straighter bowlers in the New Zealand side. And uh, with all that messing around, the new batsman at the crease is the wicketkeeper, Mar Marcel Shaver. That's one bounce and four runs. Good shot. Some of them are doing it better than pretty well. It's having a good day, the wicketkeeper batsman. Marcel Shaver, and that's a very good shot. Just drifting down leg side. He has to pick it up, and he does it well. One bounce, four. Three overs remaining. 169 for six, a long way from the New Zealand total. 307 for eight. And Roger Twos is going to have a bowl now, so they're all having a bit of a workout. Catch! Oh, and he almost has a wicket, too, first up. In fact, he's going to concede four runs. But it was a near thing. Chris Harris is an excellent fieldsman. Wasn't too far wide of him. Well, this is a good shot on the up. There's a man there at cover, Harris. And he'll go after anything. Feel for the stumping by Jamon. And again, uh, umpire Robinson has gone for the third umpire to make a decision. And this could be a big moment for Stephen Fleming. Let's have a look. Well, Shaquille Khan, the third umpire. Ian Robinson's giving him a good working out. A good bit of work here from Jamon. And yes, well, that's got to be very close. We'll see the bats back there, and he's given them straight away. Well, that is interesting. So Stephen Fleming has a wicket. Delight for him. And uh, the batsman, Marcel Shaver, is out. Stumped by Jamon. Off the bowling of Fleming for 12. And uh, Holland 181 for 7. That'll be a wide from Roger Tews. And it'll probably be four of them by the looks of things. Yes, it will. So Tews strays down the leg side in the last over. He gets a bit of a glare too from the captain and the wicket keeper. Lee Jamon goes past him and down to the fence. He looks back at the bowler and he's not really that interested in looking at, at the captain. Into the gloves of Lee Jamon, and that is it. The 50 overs have been completed. Handshakes all round, and New Zealand win this game by 119 runs. As after 50 overs, Holland finish at 188 for seven and reply to New Zealand's 307 for eight at the end of 50 overs. It was always going to be a tall order for the Dutch, but uh, Ian Smith have come out of this match with a lot of credit. It was a big occasion, and they certainly didn't let themselves down on the field. The commitment was there for the full 50 overs with the bat. They didn't get the best of starts. They lost their hitter, Nolan Clark, fairly early on in the piece. He was the one that was going to give them the flyer to give them a, this target a bit of a shake. And when he went, then I think it was rest, up to the rest of them to really get some respectability. And at 188 for seven, they certainly achieved that as well. Good innings from Cantrell, 45, rolling the fairway. He looks exciting with 45. And Northwick with uh, 36. And from a New Zealand point of view, good signs there too. I think the key one there, Robert Kennedy. Some shaky times for him early on in his one-day international to career. But uh, today, I think, back to uh, his best form. And certainly he can come out with uh, some distinction as well. But uh, the organisers of the match, they'll be happy. There's been a lot of runs scored, some attractive cricket. And all in all, it's been a good occasion.